Now you've probably heard of the vagus nerve and the importance of it. And there's all sorts of videos on it. There are certain types of therapy that people do for the vagus nerve. But I think in this video, it's going to be very important for you to understand the number one reason why your vagus nerve might not be working, as well as in a very important function of the vagus nerve that you also might not be aware of, which is the production of hydrochloric acid. The acid in your stomach is regulated by the tone of your vagus nerve. So this leads to a huge chain of a lot of bad things that can happen to your digestion. But if you know the simplicity of how to fix it, boy, you can turn things around real quick and improve a lot of digestive problems, okay? All right, so what is the main neurotransmitter involved in the vagus nerve? It's acetylcholine. And acetylcholine needs vitamin B1, okay? Very, very important. And B1 is a very common deficiency with so many people because they're doing too many carbohydrates, they're going through too much stress, they might drink a lot of coffee or tea, there's a whole series of reasons why you might be deficient in B1. If you don't have enough B1, that vagus nerve cannot make the hydrochloric acid that you need. And so just hear me out on what happens when you don't have enough hydrochloric acid. Now, there's other reasons why you might not have hydrochloric acid. Let's say you're getting older, or you take an antacid, or you're on antibiotics, or you don't have enough salt in your diet. Regardless of the cause, that hydrochloric acid is very, very, very important. It should be between one and three, extremely acidic. If it's not the correct pH, the valve on the top of the stomach won't close. So you're gonna get um, acid reflux, you're gonna get GERD, you're gonna have heartburn. Okay, that's number one. And you may have also the hoarseness in the throat as well because of the acid and enzymes that are leaking up or regurgitating up into your esophagus, literally dissolving your tissue. You can't digest protein too well. So the protein you eat doesn't break down into amino acids. And that can increase your risk of getting allergies and give you bloating and constipation. And by the way, a really good remedy for constipation is vitamin B1. Why? Because it not only increases the digestion because it increases acid in your stomach, it also increases something called peristalsis or the pumping action of your colon. So without this hydrochloric acid, you don't digest protein. You don't absorb minerals like iron, like calcium, like magnesium, like potassium. So you become anemic. You also are more susceptible to getting H. pylori, right? Which then can create gastritis or an ulcer. Just as a side note, if you have H. pylori, uh, a really good remedy is sulforaphane, okay? And it just so happens that sulforaphane is in cabbage. It's in broccoli sprouts. It's in a lot of the cruciferous vegetables. The other thing you're at risk for when you don't have enough uh, stomach acid is stomach cancer, as well as an increase in pathogens going right through the stomach into the small intestine. And what happens next is you start to get microbes in the small intestine. You shouldn't have a lot of bacteria and because then you get this thing called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And then those microbes compete for food. So they start stealing nutrition and you have a lot of bloating and gas. And the more fiber you eat, the worse it is because you're getting this abnormal fermentation. And then the more probiotics you have, the worse things get. And this is all because you don't have that acid in your stomach to kill off the microbes. The acid in the stomach also triggers the release of bile. The bile also helps to act as a detergent to kill off microbes in the small intestine. That's why the only part of the small intestine that can help you reabsorb these uh, bile salts, it's the very last part before it goes into the large intestine it gets absorbed and it gets recycled. So you recycle like 95% of your bile salts because you need them as a detergent to kill off microbes in the small intestine, as well as extract nutrients from your food, which you're not gonna do if you don't have enough bile because you don't have enough acid because you don't have enough B1. So now all this undigested material ends up in the large intestine. Boy, there's a lot of issues that occur there because your large intestine is not necessarily meant for a complete digestion of proteins and these other things. 90% of all your digestion occurs in the small intestine. The large intestine is more for fermentation of fiber or recycling of these electrolytes. So you can imagine that the, now the large intestine is stuck with this big job of trying to digest things and you just have all sorts of uh, digestive problems. Uh, you might have gas, diarrhea, constipation, and then you might get inflammation, okay? That then leads to leaky gut. 
and then you have immune problems and allergies and food allergies and potentially autoimmune problems. But other than that, you'll be perfectly fine, except for anything going on negative in your digestive system instantly translates to problems up in your head, okay? Because there's something called the gut brain axis. And if you're not digesting, if you have these problems in the gut, you're going to also have cognitive problems and mood issues and not feel good mentally. Take natural B1 immediately. You can get it from nutritional yeast. You can find a supplement that has natural B1, but that would be the first thing to do. And that just might solve all of these problems, okay? Now, chances are you might be very depleted with this hydrochloric acid. So you're probably going to have to replenish that because um, of how long this has gone on. So the way to do that is start to take betaine hydrochloride, okay? And you can get that in the supplement and you take, don't just take one, take like at least five, and then you want to increase it up to maybe even 10, right? For a meal, because you might need a lot to create this effect and you might have to take it for a period of time to build up the acid in your stomach. There's some other things you might want to take if you have gastritis or an ulcer, like zinc carnosine. If you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you might want to add garlic to the mix. And if you have inflammation in the lower part of your gut, you may need to do a carnivore for a while because fiber from vegetables won't work. I only talked about one purpose of vitamin B1 to increase the, the tone of the vagus nerve. But B1 does a lot more. And if you have not seen my video that I did at one of my summits, okay, I put that up right here. Check it out.